Said 43 months, it was my birthday yesterday. Come on, the Reds, you'll never walk alone. I reckon Mo scores tomorrow against Madrid. I hope he does, Scotty. I hope he does. Um, and again, I hope he stops and has another chat in the mix zone afterwards to watch heads melt because I really don't understand it. And I've one point that I'd like to raise, but I'm going to wait for the chat to fill up a bit more before I get stuck into it because I'm seeing a lot of hypocrisy around this stuff with Mohamed Salah and I feel like I have to call it out. And look, I'm also open to being called out myself because, you know, previously I have spoken about Mohamed Salah's contracts and contract um, negotiations becoming maybe a, a distraction in the club in years gone past. But I would like to show that this is a very different situation and it is uh, it is worth discussing that. So we're going to talk about that tonight as well. So right, let's go through some of Arne Slot's comments from his press conference today. Um, he was speaking a little bit about Jamie Carragher's selfish Mohamed Salah claim. And I like the angle that Arne Slot took on this. He said, I focused a bit more on what else he said. He said he was one of the best five players Liverpool had. I agree with him. I don't think it distracts Mo. I think it brings the best out of him. Uh, I talked to Mo about what I expect from him like I do all the players. He's in a good place at the moment. So, as I said, it has been a weird time, hasn't it, over the past few days, seeing all this stuff and people going in on Mo, people in powerful positions going in on Mo. Um, Four Fortunes put out a great video, by the way. I don't know if you've seen it, about the Mohamed Salah contract extension. And even though they've got the wrong Liverpool fan channel in there now, come on, boys, it's still a great video. And um, they took the piss out of Carragher a little bit, saying that he had a massive contract from FSG to, to make sure that he spouted the club's opinions. And I often wonder, everybody else seems to think that this is a no-brainer for Salah. But somehow, some influential people in and around Liverpool and Liverpool's former players and Liverpool's prominent podcasts and shows seem to have a different view on this. Seem to be, you know, going in on Mohamed Salah and his timing of this. And I've certainly got a very different take on it. So we'll be discussing that in a while as well. There was a bit of news coming out tonight from Team Talk. So I would take it with a huge pinch of salt. But if true, it's positive stuff. So I'm going to read that out to you now and see what you guys think about it. Again, please don't take this as gospel. It is just, you know, paper talk. But if true, good news for us. So uh, Team Talk have said Van Dyke agreed in principle over his new contract. Just details to be ironed out. Trent wants the captain of Liverpool in the future and made his feelings known. His deal will make him one of the top earners at Liverpool. And Salah has a new strong offer being prepared. So I hope, I certainly hope that that's true. But like I said, take it with a pinch of salt. But that would be great news. Especially if you got Virgil tied up quickly. Got, oh, I say quickly. Got that one done as soon as possible is what I meant to say. Because we all know that um, it is a distraction. But I think the finger of blame from Jamie Carragher from uh, others and i'll read you out a post actually um one second i want to read you out a post here from one of the guys from red men tv and again this isn't me going in on red men i just feel like i have to i have to discuss this post uh, so one second again not going in on anyone just trying to form this narrative of why everyone's going in on mo you know kara's going in on them Stee isn't happy really with it either. And look, I like Stee Hoare. Full disclosure, I have nothing against Stee Hoare. Anytime I've had any interaction with him, I found him to be a very pleasant guy. And he said, nobody's called him selfish for wanting to stay. There won't be a Liverpool fan alive who wants him to leave. He's been called selfish for seeking out journals for the first time in seven years to talk about it in the week of the Madrid and City games. He's every right to be pissed off, but it's undeniable that he did the interview to put pressure on. The first question the manager will get today, ahead of his biggest week in management, will be about Salah's comments, not about Madrid or City. Salah's earned the right to be selfish, and he's chosen to do it now, which isn't a coincidence. So, when would he do it? You know, it's his job to make sure that it has the most impact. And yes, there is a battle for hearts and minds. That's always been the case. But I really just don't like how quickly, particularly Cara, has turned on Mo. Um, Mo, according to Jamie Carragher, this is another post of his, said, Mo Salah only answered a question, is the new nonsense with all his fanboys, or excuse me, I'm going to read that again. So Cara said, Mo Salah only answered a question, is the new nonsense all his fanboys are spouting. Wait until you see how many questions Arnest Locke gets asked about Salah's comments. The talk should be about two of Europe's giants coming up against each other, not contracts. So, 
My question there to Kara is, why shouldn't he come out and talk about it? He'll talk about the game, Mo, if asked. But we should be embarrassed as Liverpool fans and former players that we've had journalists, fans from opposition clubs, us ourselves, many other Liverpool fans, all asking how we're here. So rather than maybe point the finger at Mo and talk about his timing, how about pointing the finger where it truly belongs? At the feet of the owners, or Richard Hughes and Michael Edwards, who have had a very long time to resolve this, but have seemingly not. And also, what have they been doing? You know, Mohamed Salah wants to stay. And if he wants to come out and play the Battle of Hearts and Minds, well, so be it. That's his prerogative to do it. It's also Kara's prerogative to moan about it. But then again, it's mine here to say that I think it's nonsense. And I really don't think it's a great look when Kara starts going in on Liverpool fan accounts. So Anfield Sector said, The absolute cheek of you, lad, Cara, and then put up a clip, or excuse me, a clipping of a newspaper that said, Jamie Carragher would have no difficulty leaving Liverpool. And it goes on to speak about when Jamie Carragher was negotiating his own contract renewal. He said if he had to, he'd move away from Liverpool if the offer wasn't forthcoming because he wanted to continue playing football. So Cara seemingly wanted to respond to this on social media and as quote tweeted it saying, shut up you clown, read the actual quotes in it. I was asked if the club don't give me a contract, what would I do? I certainly would never play games and try to turn a fan base against the club. Can't believe how many people on here fall for this nonsense every year from players. So respectfully, Jamie, I can't believe how many former players and Liverpool fans fall for the shift from FSG and continuously make excuses for them. It is truly pathetic in my eyes. And I wonder how a former player has so much disdain for Liverpool fans seemingly having an opinion on his opinion and differing from his opinion. So to call people clowns again on social media, I don't get this. I don't understand the point of it all. I, I find it embarrassing for him, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I just don't understand why people are going in on Mo. I don't. I really, really don't. And also on this, one more thing. I don't remember Virgil van Dijk coming in for as much crap in weeks gone by when Virgil said he hadn't received the contract offer from the club. I don't remember the same song and dance about it. Now, you might say to me, Craig, that wasn't in the week building up to Real Madrid and Manchester City. But let's be honest about this. The Madrid game isn't anything massive here. It's not a fucking knockout phase of the Champions League. It's a group stage game where it's not going to really make too much of a difference to our Champions League progression. So I don't understand this narrative about these giants of Euro comes. It's a group stage game. You know, it's not too big. It's a great game. But the, the nonsense of these narratives are just excuse making yet again for these owners. And I'm, I'm quite frankly sick of it as a Liverpool fan. I'm sick of accepting mediocrity and the bare minimum from them and I'm sick of anybody who dares question the gospel according to John W. Henry being belittled by you know other podcasts other YouTube channels former players media it's embarrassing it's embarrassing truly that Mo has to nearly go with the begging bowl to get a deal that Virgil has to nearly go with the begging bowl to get a deal and that these same people that all of these people are defending have put us in this position where once again, we're a laughing stock because of the cheapness of our owners. So that's what I think should be talked about, but each to their own. Craig, why isn't Cara calling out John? So again, Scotty, I don't know Cara personally. I just don't understand it. I don't understand how they don't go in on the owners or the club. Well, I do understand it. They're pussies. That's quite simply it. I can only say how I feel, and I just feel that they just don't have a backbone amongst them. I also remember Neville on there spouting his lies about Liverpool going down through the list of managers to get to Arne Slot and Jamie Carragher not pushing back on that either. These people are supposed to be on there as former players representing our thoughts as a fan base and as a club. And all he ever does is brown nose the owners like everybody else that has access because, as I said, I don't believe they have the backbone to stand up. But that's just my take. Uh, LFC Gamer and Vlogs, even Craig, with his comments on Tuchel not being English manager for the England team and what he just said about Salah, my respect for Cala, e Cara, even though he may be a Liverpool legend, has gone. I just, you know, I find it sad that he's taken pops at Liverpool fan accounts like Anfield Sector, who are just 
trying to point out some hypocrisies in his stance. And rather than take them like an adult, just continue, calls people clowns and whoppers and everything else that he does. It's demeaning. It should be beneath him. But uh, again, like I've said, these people are just B-Tech YouTubers at this point with a shit ton of money behind them because they aren't parroting fans actually feel. And any poll that you take will show that Liverpool fans right now are very much behind Mohamed Salah and very much pissed off with the owners. Some feel it'll still get sorted and it could well do. But again, why this narrative? Why now? 